What is going on guys, I'm Adriano and this video is about how to write Parquet data to AWS S3 using AWS Data Wrangler. Now if you're unsure what AWS Data Wrangler is, that's okay, I got you covered. Check out my overview video in the description below. So to get started here, we're going to import AWS Data Wrangler library into Python and I'm just in my Jupyter Notebook over here. Alright, so now what we're going to do is read in our data we want to write to Parquet. So here I've set the path to my bucket, so it's called Adriano Data Uploads. I've also set the object directory under that. And now my third string here is just combining the two to a full S3 path. So now I'm going to be using the AWS Data Wrangler read CSV to get my data that I want to write to Parquet. Now if you want to deep dive into this function read CSV, Check out my video in the description below as well. All right, so I'm just gonna run this function to read in my CSV data into my Jupyter Notebook here. All right, and now that it's successfully been read in, there's been no errors, I'm just gonna use the head function on my pandas data frame. Remember, this function returns to us a pandas data frame. So we're just gonna take a look at the first five rows here. And what you see here is we have six columns. So before I write this to Parquet, I'm just gonna clean up my data set. I don't like that this column is coming in is unnamed dash zero and that my latitude and longitude are capitalized. So let's go ahead and remove that. So I'm gonna do a quick transform in uh, pandas over here. So we're gonna apply the drop function on our pandas data frame to remove that column. <clears throat> so then we're gonna pass that new data frame just created and we're gonna apply a rename function on our pandas data frame to now rename latitude to be latitude with a lowercase and longitude as lowercase as well. All right, so I'm just gonna give that a run. And now let's just inspect our data to make sure it's coming out the way we expect. Looks good, so as you can see here, that column has been removed and latitude and longitude have been successfully renamed, great. Now we can go over to actually writing our data to Parquet. So I've just set up the variables that I need to pass to my function called to Parquet. So in this block of code here, I have all the parameters I'm going to pass to my S3 to Parquet function over here. So let's just take some time and review all the parameters that we're going to be using to write to Parquet. All right, so our first required parameter is DF, which stands for data frame, which is the pandas data frame that contains the data we want to write to Parquet. So in my case, that is this raw underscore DF clean data frame over here. I'm just going to pass that as my first parameter. So now that we've passed our data to this function, we now need to set where we are writing this data in S3. So this information goes to the path parameter here, and I'm gonna pass my write path to this. So this is a new location that currently doesn't exist. All right, so with these two parameters here, I can execute this function and it's gonna write to AWS S3, and I'm gonna have my data in Parquet. But I'm going to cover some other attributes that I found really helpful that allow you to use the AWS ecosystem even more. So I'm going to add some additional optional parameters that will allow us to leverage an AWS glue table as well as even using Athena. So next parameter here, we're going to say data set is equal to true. So by making data set equal to true, this will store our data set as a parquet data set instead of just ordinary files. All right, so the next function I'm gonna add is called mode, and I'm gonna make that equal to overwrite. And what overwrite does is if I run this function multiple times, it's going to overwrite the entire data set. Now, you can also use append if you just want to append data, or you can also set this to overwrite underscore partitions to overwrite individual partitions instead. All right, so the next parameter is database and I'm going to make that equal to default. So this parameter is the AWS glue database that you want to write to. So if you wanna know where to find that, if you go to the AWS glue console over here and then go to databases, you can see the list of databases that you have. All right, the next parameter is going to be table, and, and this is the name of the Glue Athena table that you want to create. So I've given this a name called Animal Locations Cleaned, so I'm just going to pass that to this parameter here. And next, we're going to define the column types, so that is going to be the D type parameter. And you can see I've already created the dictionary of Athena slash Glue uh, data types to be cast. So we can see that ID is going to be an int, animal, string, 
lat and long are double and date is going to be a string. So I'm just going to pass that to the dtype parameter here. When you're creating a new table, I like to pass a description of this table name. So I'm going to add the description parameter and that's going to be the location of animals around the world. Actually, just notice a small mistake I made here. Uh, it's just supposed to be a string. So now I'm just going to pass that to my description over here. And the last parameter we're going to add for now is going to be the column comments. So this parameter adds the column comments associated with the column names that we're adding to our table. I'm just going to add that here. So it's going to be column underscore comments equals to comments. If I didn't make any mistakes, this should work. So let's just go ahead and run our function here to write our parquet data. Oops, made a little mistake here. So I just forgot to add a comma here. All right, second time's a charm, right? All right, so this spits out the path of the file we wrote to in S3 and any partition values associated with it. So because I didn't pass a partition yet, we're going to do that later in the video. You see this coming back as blank. So let's just quickly inspect our data and see what it looks like in S3. So I'm just going to head over to that directory here. Um, I wrote it to animal locations parquet clean. And as you can see here, it successfully picked up. It's a parquet file and the parquet file name. Perfect. So let's just also check to see our glue table was created successfully. So I created it to the default table here and now we successfully see our table so you can see that we have the comments that we passed the data types and the column names so now that we have our aws glue table and our data in parquet we can actually query this serverlessly through aws athena so i'm just going to refresh my data sources here and what you should see is our new table now appears so you can see the five columns associated with this data set. So I'm just gonna do a simple select all statements. So select all from animal underscore locations underscore cleaned. And now I'm just gonna hit run query. And now we have data. So not only have we successfully written our data to S3, but we can actually query it with AWS Athena as well. All right, so maybe you want to add a partition to your data set. How do you do that with that function? Let's cover that in the next step. So as you can see, I have a date column and there is a date for every single animal in my table. So I'm going to use that as my partition column in the function. But before we do that, let's just quickly go and delete our existing data that we've created. All right, back to our Jupyter Notebook over here. All right, so to write by our date partition, all we have to do is add another parameter to our to parquet function here. And that parameter is called partition underscore calls. And this is a list that contains the columns we want to have as our partitions. So as you can see here, I'm just going to use my date. So it's just one column that I'm passing to this parameter. And if everything goes well, we should now have our data written by partitions as date. All right, good, it worked. So now you can see that we have a lot more paths being outputted because there's now a path for each date. So let's go ahead and check out what this looks like in AWS S3. So my console here, I'm just gonna go back to that directory. And now what we should see is we now have partitions by date. So within each one of these, we should have a parquet file. Yes, we do. And you can see that it was modified today. And if we go over to the glue console to see what our table looks like, I'm just going to click on that new table again that we just created. And as you can see here, now our date column now has a partition associated with it. Great. So now we should be able to successfully query our data in Athena by our partition. So now, as you can see, my last query that I ran earlier was around 200 kilobytes. So let's just add a where statement and say date is equal to 10301. And now if this works successfully, you can see that we've utilized our partition and we've scanned in a lot less data. Now, this might not seem like a big deal because my data set's really small, but imagine my data set was terabytes in size. You know, by querying by this partition, I could actually save a lot of money because I'm querying a lot less data. So if I just quickly refresh my glue catalog table, you should now see that partition has been added to the table name.
All right, so I hope you found this video helpful and you now know how to write Parquet data to AWS S3 and even querying this data set with AWS Athena. Thanks so much for watching. And if you want to support me, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.